up into the next thing. So Rod Spollen wins the class 14 from Eddie Williams, Stephanie Wilton, Mike Hawley, Guy Spollen and uh, Brett Pillinger next up. This is the class in which uh, we've got uh, David Gidden with that Lotus 23B, who's really flying. Sean McClurg, fourth in class with the Alain this morning, but third in class, Robert Bremner with the Cobra, with actually a quite a hairy, scary run. It was. Keep it neat, he can go quicker still. So Crest of the wave this uh, this year after a great win at uh, Silverstone in May. Sean McClurg there goes through. Wow. 44.97. Wow, how about that? 44.97. Okay. That's a, a three hundredths improvement. What about David Gidden? This is a quick run yeah. so far. David Gidden, 64 feet, 2.12 seconds. That's a, a, a very, very good time. He's very quick through the top. Here's David Gidden in 199. 41.25, Marcus. 41.25. He's gone quicker than this morning by three tenths of a second. David Gidden, that's a great time. That'll take some chasing down. And uh, in the overalls, he is, uh, well, he's very much second between Martin Jones and fastest man Jack Woodhouse uh, at this moment. Now we've got Tim Bowles in the ex-David Piper Chevrolet Camaro. That's a 67 car, kind of a 200. Tim Bowles, uh, 11th in the class at the moment, 9th in the class at the moment, I think it's pardon, the uh, screen flicked over, got, an uh, got a Mustang locking up. We've got Jason this. Andrews in the Mustang. Yeah, 65 Mustang fastback. We've got these two wonderful chaparrales coming up shortly. The second of these two Mustangs sports a six litre engine this one with the 4.7 this one we're looking at on the screen with the six litre 47.74 for jason andrews exactly a second away from this morning's time 202 is one of the mustangs we oui, wags its tail might have cost him a tenth or so 202 on his way up and that is Steve Thompson up into fifth place with a 45-66. 45-66. Comes Tony Gallagher in his first competitive event, and he's gone all over the grass at the first corner. Missed it completely. Like a rodeo horse rather than a Mustang. But Did he stop to eat? Not damaged anything. Did he stop to eat any hay despite the fact that it's a Mustang? A pony car. So I think damage just uh, just overshot and yep. uh, went round the back on the grass and came back on. So Learning uh, a new way up for uh, Shadow Impney. Yeah, Giraffe enjoying his first event. Quite, quite an adventure on a couple of occasions, hasn't he? Here's David Milchrist from the Isle of Man. With the MG. It's a very rapid MGP. It is. Milchrist, big names in motorsport in uh, oh man. Been involved since the 60s, autocross, auto test, road rallies, an everyday car, still a mini. He was rally champion in 70, 71, 72 as the member of the Austin Apprentices Car Club. And lots of stuff in the MG Maestro Challenge. And uh, this faithful 1963 MGA, uh, MGB, sorry, as FIA spec car. Also did the Le Mans Legends race with uh, the late Barry Siddery Smith, runners up in the under two litre class. Also, uh, one of the official course car drivers of the Isle of Man TT, the Manx Grand Prix. So he loves his motorsport and has done for more than half a century. Yep, well, Craig oh, Jones has a big adventurous uh, run in the Elbow Mark 7 with its twin cam engine. <laughs> BMW powered uh, Mark 7S, this one, two litre car. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. So it hasn't got quite the balance of the twin cam powered car, but it's got a lot more torque. 45.15 for Craig Jones, uh, improving from 45.7. Oh, the what a chaperone. spin for the chaparral. I don't think he meant to do the donut, but he converted it into quite a useful he donut. He did. Um, Won't it have cost him more than a second or so. Yeah. It was really well done. Adam Jones had an off in the um, uh, in the Chevron this morning, didn't he? Ian Wright's not hanging around in, in the automatic gearbox to Chapra Chapra 2. Here he comes. Just arrived uh, far was, too aggressively. Yeah. 
and it went round. Cox on the side of the car used to make model race cars, didn't they? Yeah. Keeps the power on and whips it round. His chapeau one. one. Hiding behind the straw bales. Yes, that's Nicky Pierce driving that. Remember him from his Formula Ford and his, uh, Formula Ford 2000 days. Had a Saracen in Formula Ford. That seems to remember quite a rare beast. Our American friends will be looking at this with envy because the Chaparral, they only made less than half a dozen of these Chaparral ones and they're all immensely valuable, immensely in demand. 4806 free and right with the donut. Impromptu as it was, 4806 would have put him down somewhere around 10th in class. Nick Pierce then up towards the top, 5283. Nick Pierce, and here's the beautiful Chevron BMW B8, the Targo Florio class winning car, raced by Mike and Richard Knight. Could well be one of period. our favourite cars for Marcus and me. We both, uh, I first saw one at a hill climb in 1969, fell in love on the spot, hasn't left me, and uh, Adam Jones snakes through the finish in the car that I raced at Paul Ricard a few years ago. Here's Tom Walker, who had an adventure this morning, didn't he? And uh, Tom Walker with the very rapid Lola. Look at that, tight line for the corner, a little flick of opposite lock to catch it. He goes past the chateau on the brakes, get it stopped on. Good exit from the corner, essential. The squeeze on the throttle up into the chicane. It all went away from the top of the hill this morning, didn't it? And let's see if he can make a clean pass this time. Oh, he's driven it right through the bollard. That was impressive. Taking the bollard over the line with him in a 42.54. 42.54, four, that takes him second in class. Good recovery from Tom Walker from out of the, uh, uh, out of the running. Stephen Palmer in 2-1-1. Another of the Lotus 23Bs, which is twin cam engine. Uh, so it's David Gidden on a 41.25 in Lotus 23B. 2.10 Tom Walker next. What can Robert Brem Car with the onboard camera and leaves. That's Andy Bradshaw. Pick that up in a while. And I haven't seen Robert Bremner come down with the um, AC Cobra. I was hoping to see, because he's just been bumped out of the top three, hasn't he? Uh, here we go, riding up with uh, Andy Bradshaw, Lotus 30, 4.7 litre Ford V8 engine in the back, ZF gearbox, cruciform chassis. Not particularly stiff. And banks and banks and banks of torque to twist the chassis. Even Jim Clark had a bit of a struggle with these in period. Everybody did. Nicely through the finish, well done, sir. Oh, he punched the air with delight. 48.90, got to the summit. Here's Anthony Taylor with the McLaren M1B. Yeah, okay, uh, an evolution of the M1A built by uh, Elva. McLaren themselves built a couple of uh, the, these cars for the Can-Am in uh, 66, which uh, Chris McLaren and his compatriot Chris Amon drove. <laughs> Taylor, who runs Auto Tune in uh, Rishton up in Lancashire. Long, long time racer. And uh, 213 making it up towards the top of the hill. It's going to get a long 48, I think. 48.38. So well done to uh, Anthony Taylor. Michael O'Shea in the Maserati part. Cooper Monaco. 5 litre V8 Maserati engine, appropriate for this weekend, and uh, first raced over here by Roy Salvadori. Two fourteen then. Keep Monaco from 1964. There's Ben Deschere with the glorious Maserati birdcage. Bird cage. Well, look at the chassis. Lots and lots of little tubes. Four cylinder, four cylinder front engine, either two liter or three liter. It's typo sixty or sixty one. 
well, I've seen Rob, uh, Rob Bremner now up there, which is great. We can see him in his Cobra pretty soon, see if he can rest back at top three position in this class. This uh, birdcage belongs to Nick Mason and uh, Ben Desher and Charles Neil Jones look after it in their premises in the Cotswolds. But here's the lovely little Alpine A110 that uh, Gary had a close look, Gary Chapman had a close look at and discussed with its owner. Yeah, Rob Lawrence's car, it's absolutely beautiful. He was a, a, a great rally man the first time round. Did um, Welsh Group N champion 1988, third in Motoring News in, in uh, uh, long ago as 1970, and second in the Metro 6R4 championship in 88. Included the Birmingham Super Prix, Rob Lawrence, 88 and 89. On the screen is the Marcus with its wooden chassis and Volvo engine. They made a lot of these and a lot of them are on display opposite us down at the start. Marcos Club. 216 Rob Lawrence, 49.98. Signed by the Adams brothers, wasn't it? Dennis and Peter Adams. Is a uh, very rapid 2.1 litre stretched beetle. Barn find in Sweden. Split, uh, split rear window beetle. That uh, split rear window lasted until the very early 50s. This yes, is a 52 car, this one. Tries to start hard, doesn't he? It's going well. Tail slide from uh, Ian Clark with the BW. Well under 50 seconds. 48.7. 48.70. Ian Patton with the Morgan. Ian, we've got to thank for our wonderful Lancaster display. He spoke nicely to the Battle of Britain Memorial flight, which so that it wasn't just a fly past. The, uh, the Lancaster, as I'm sure you remember, came, did a couple of laps of Chateau Impney. Ian was general manager at Prescott for the Bugatti Owners Club and initiated a lot of really interesting meetings. Next of our Morgans, that's 221, Gregor Morgan Dixon Smith. I think it was christened with the Morgan as a second name or whether it popped it in later. That has not, but he's uh, exercising the, uh, the works MMC 11 plus 8. Very nicely. Pops over the brow into the roundabout. On the line, Rachel Lovett in the Cobra. She's got one red glove and one black glove, so she remembers which hand is which. <laughs> so, Rachel Morgan Smith over the line. 46.31. That's a really good time. Boo, a lovely Smith number plate for the Cobra. Gregor Dixon Smith's going to move up from 47.34 with that. He's going to move up a couple of places, I would think. And uh, here comes uh, here comes Rachel with uh, the lovely AC. And here's Rob Bremner oh, in the fierce Cobra with its new engine. And Rob drives it fiercely. Had a very adventurous run this morning, but it was still very quick. It was, and uh, what can he do now? Look at the Cobra off the line, 2.25 seconds for the first 64 feet. Very nice line into the roundabout, and much neater exit. Still a little bit sideways, but that's fine. Get the momentum up. Up towards the top, get it round. Beautiful, just uh, clips that a little bollard through the finish. He goes, what a super time that is.